Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Airplane Anatomy. In this series, I break down different airplanes from their history to their engineering to how they fly. So today in episode 9, we're going to be talking about a plane that is basically the equivalent of a tank in the skies. That is, it was made to be quote-unquote indestructible and has also over the years slowly become the top hog as an attack aircraft for the US Air Force. That is the Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II, also known as the Warthog. Now it's a little known fact that the Warthog was actually named by its engineers and designers because of how ugly the plane was, but over the years it's obviously become a term of endearment. Now there's also some incredible engineering behind the Warthog that makes it quote unquote indestructible. So today we're going to dive into all of those brilliant designs and engineering in this episode, so stay tuned. The year was 1960. It's been almost 15 years since the end of World War II, but the US was fighting a new battle, and that was the Vietnam War. Now, following World War II, there hasn't really been a big focus on developing and improving attack aircraft, so the US went into Vietnam with very limited aircraft options. Now, they wanted an airplane that could support the troops on the ground closely. This is also known as Close Air Support, or CAS. Now, the fighter aircrafts at that time, like the F-105 Thunder Chief or the F-4 Phantom, Phantom weren't too great at this because they were fighter aircrafts and they were designed to fly at very high altitudes and very quickly, mainly for air-to-air -air combat. So they weren't really designed for air-to-ground combat, which is mainly the role of attack aircrafts, and that is also the difference between an attack and fighter aircraft. So without a lot of options, the US had to use their old propeller planes from World War II, like the Douglas A-1 Sky Raider, in order to conduct ground support. Now the issue with this was that one while these planes could fly low and slow, they were extremely vulnerable to enemy fire from the ground and also couldn't hold much firepower. And because of this, the US actually lost over 200 A1s as a result in Southeast Asia. So eventually, the US learned their lesson and decided to invest in a new program to develop and attack aircraft, the A-10. There were three main design requirements for the A-10 long loiter time, extreme survivability, and also high firepower. So loiter time is the amount of time that an aircraft can spend over a relatively small area of land, for example, a target. Now obviously this was the biggest weakness for fighter aircrafts. So this was accomplished on the A-10 by increasing its wing area and also decreasing its wing aspect ratio, which is the ratio between the length and the width of the wing. This wing design helped the A-10 generate a lot of lift, which meant that it could fly at slower speeds without stalling and also it could take off and land on much shorter runways. And on top of that, its flight control surfaces like its ailerons were made to be much bigger so that the plane was much more maneuverable. The second requirement was extreme survivability. In other words, this plane was about to get shot at a lot. So this was of course the biggest weakness of propeller planes like the A-1 Sky Raider. So this was accomplished on the A-10 by adding a very thick layer of titanium around the cockpit and also major flight controls. This was referred to as the bathtub. The fuel tanks of the A-10 actually had a self-sealing ability if they were ever hit. So they were actually surrounded by layers of this rubber material that once they come into contact with fuel, they would actually absorb the fuel and expand, essentially sealing off their own wound. Now this is truly some black magic. The third requirement was high firepower, and in fact the plane itself was designed around a 30mm Avenger autocannon. And in fact, in order to place this autocannon, the landing wheels are actually placed slightly off-center to accommodate for its placement. And with this autocannon, the A-10 can actually disable a tank on the ground with a range of 6.5 kilometers. And on top of that, the A-10 carries a large arsenal of different weapons with its high payload capacity. So it not only has traditional bombs, it also has has some laser guided bombs as well as usual missiles and flares. Now given that I know close to nothing about these weapons and how they work, I'm just gonna leave it at that. The A-10 entered service in 1967 and has served with the U.S. Air Force in every major U.S. conflict ever since. And it's not hard to see why it's so well-loved. 
It's a low fuss and high performing plane. The A-10 actually excels at forward bases with very limited resources since it requires very little equipment on the ground. In fact, it's actually designed with most parts to be interchangeable between the left and the right side. For example, the engines, the landing gears, and the vertical stabilizers. As we mentioned before, the A-10 can also take off and land on very short runways or even dirt paths. This makes it extremely agile in different environments. And on top of that, the A-10 has proven itself to be able to take an incredible amount of damage and still stay functional. So for example, there was an instance during the Iraq war where an A-10 lost both of its hydraulic systems and its pilot, Captain Kim Campbell, was still able to fly the plane over an hour away to safety using what is called its manual reversion mode, which is basically a system of different cranks and levers and pulleys to physically control the aircraft. Now this is a testament to both the incredible engineering of the A-10 and also the insane flying done by Captain Campbell. In the plane's actual operator manual, it states that the A-10 is designed to fly with one engine, one half of the tail, one elevator, and half of the wing missing. That is badass. Now, despite the great performance of the A-10, over the past few decades, there has constantly been talks of either replacing the program, phasing it out with a new aircraft, or canceling it altogether. And in 1982, Congress actually voted to pull all the funding from the A-10 program. And a few years later, Fairchild, which is the company that manufactured the A-10, actually sold its rights to a company called Grumman. At that time, Congress intended for F-16s to replace the A-10 program, but it was quickly demonstrated once again that fighter aircraft still couldn't fully replace the role of attack aircraft, and the A-10 program was revived. So eventually, Boeing took over the renovations of the A-10 program, and just last year, in 2019, Boeing signed a $999 million contract to maintain the plane and also update its wings. And recently, the US Air Force has also said that they have no plans currently of retiring the A-10s. So fortunately, it looks like we are still going to be seeing the hogs in the skies, at least for a little while. Thanks so much for watching until the end of this episode. What did you think of the 810 Warhog? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new aviation content. And as always, I'll see you guys soon.